What's poppin' and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher's Fisherman, guys. Today we're gonna go out and fish a pond that I've actually fished a few times on the channel before, but it has been quite some time. It's probably been at least a few months since I've gone out there and fished it. Kind of the deal with this pond is that there is some really good quality sized bass in there, but there is a ton of dinks. And you know, the weather has just been crazy hot recently. And the good thing about this pond is the dinks actually do bite pretty consistently. So I just wanted to go out there and catch something because we are having this like crazy heat wave in Charlotte right now. It's been like, I don't know, 97, 98 degrees for like the past four or five days straight. You know, it jumped up from like the mid eighties to the high nineties and we're just getting just just hit with some heat right now and these fish are just completely shut down so I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like I could at least hopefully catch some fish and then maybe just maybe we'll come across one of those giants that's lurking somewhere in these ponds but I haven't caught a big one out of here in a while so you know my hopes aren't super high but you know there definitely is that chance and you know if it happens to happen in this heat I would be even more shocked but you know we're just gonna go out there and give it our best shot but hopefully something magical happens today but anyways guys before we jump into it I do want to let y'all know that I have a discount code for Strike King and that is FTF10 if y'all use that on strikeking.com you can save yourself 10% on all your baits across their entire website and everything else that is sold on their website. Just feel free to use that. And then you can also use code FTF on Lose's website and save yourself free shipping on all the rods and reels and everything on there as well. But without further ado, guys, let's hop right into it and hopefully we find us a big one. Just made it to the spot. Let me hop out of the truck. Can't forget my little, my little baits. Oh, actually I don't need this. I have some of those in my bag, but let me swing around here. Grab the rods and stuff. Gonna try to keep it light today. Not bring too much stuff. And by not too much stuff, I mean probably like four rods. Um, we're definitely gonna want that. We're definitely gonna want this. And I've been wanting to throw this as well. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with four today. And finally, but not least, we got the little rage bug right here. So I think we're gonna go with those four rods. Just keep it with this one bag, toss my water in there, need a little bit of H2O. There we go. I think that about does it. Let's head out to the pond. Walking up on the pond now, I usually start right here, but I actually think today I'm going to walk all the way down to the far end where the small pond is and start there. This looks like a good place to call home base for right now. Just gonna take my bag off, throw it down there. We're gonna get started with the old chatter donk, AKA the thunder cricket. Let me just get this line untangled off my rod. There we go. Got that situated. Check my drag and stuff. Seems like it's good enough. Things all dialed in. Let's get cranking. typically like to start out with moving baits just so I can cover some water try to figure out where some fish might be located and then once I have like a better idea of what the fish are actually doing or you know might be kind of like generalizing themselves around I typically will like to slow down throw some soft plastic some stuff like that especially during the summer when it's nice and hot so we're gonna see if we get anything to bite this this or a lipless crankbait and if nothing's happening with that, I have that rage bug and I have a big like 10 inch worm as well that I want to try throwing around and dragging around, see if there's some fish that are willing to slurp those up. Well guys, I didn't have any luck with a thunder cricket at all. So I'm going to walk over here to my stuff and put this down for a minute. And I think I'm going to pick up this two tap, give this thing a good amount of chucks, see if they'll eat this. They tend to eat this a little bit better then that thunder cricket that thunder cricket just tends to get better quality doesn't mean i can't catch big ones on the two tap i do all the time but this one just tends to get bit more just by you know fish in general so let me give this a shot see if anything's interested in this they definitely weren't in the thunder cricket i've had one possible bite and that was it so hopefully uh we have a different story to tell after a few casts with this
there's one. That's a fish, I think. If it is, it's really small. Oh, yep, it's a fish. First one of the day on the two tap. <laughs> Never lets me down, it seems like. Oh, come on in, bud. She ain't that big, but it is a fish, nevertheless. There's, these two ponds have a lot of small fish in them, I will tell you all that, but there's some really good quality ones in here as well. And this is definitely on the bigger end of the small ones, I will say. You know, there's a lot of bass in here that'll eat this thing, and some crawls and, you know, so, small soft plastics that are like less than <laughs> two thirds of a pound, like six inch, eight inch bass. So it is nice to get one that has a little bit more quality than some of the other small ones in here, even though it is a small fish itself. Probably, you know, three quarters of a pound, almost a pound. Get a little bass. All right, all right. Got the skunk off the board. That is always a good feeling. Let's see if there's something else out here. Something with a little bit more meat on the bones, if you know what I mean. Oh, oh, bass chasing up in the corner. Bass chasing up in the corner. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, this should be an easy fish. Oh gosh, they were blowing up right here in this in this stuff. Oh, come on, still be fish there, still be fish there. There was like three or four bass blowing up on the edge of these rocks and stuff chasing bait. There's one. Is that a fish or I'm, I'm snagged on a rock? <laughs> Splendid. Got that off. There's one. That's a decent fish right there, guys. That's a decent one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby. Guys, that's like a four or five pounder. Oh my gosh, come on, come on, come on. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Let's freaking go. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Stay down, big mama. Stay down, big mama. Let's freaking go. Oh my gosh, it's a big fish, guys. Oh yes, yes. Right up there in that shallow little section right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Trying to hold back my excitement. There's a bunch of people trying to enjoy their morning on their back porches over there. Don't wanna scream and wake up the whole neighborhood, but that is a freaking stud. Look at that. That's pushing five pounds all day. Please tell me I brought my scale. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got the scale. Let me go ahead and zero that out and get this hook out of this fish as well. There it goes. But take a look at that fish, guys. Whoo! <laughs> Drop a comment down below. Let me know what y'all think she weighs and see if you can guess it before I throw her on the scale. But let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what she weighs. I'm saying like close to five. Five. Like high fours, mid, mid to low fives. Clear, zero it out. And four, pound, four pounds, 15 ounces, five pounds, going back and forth, literally right at five pounds. That is one heck of a fish to catch this morning, baby. Let's freaking go. Yes. Oh my goodness. I left my big camera in the car because you know, I wasn't anticipating catching anything crazy big today, but uh, looks like I should have brought it. I'm not gonna try to risk this fish's life by running all the way back to get the big camera to show y'all what she looks like with the big camera. So I think it is about time to let this big old beautiful fat mama go. Let's find a nice spot to let her on go right here in this water. Oh yeah, there you go big mama. Oh, she swims. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Oh, if I haven't sold you on the two-tap yet, I highly recommend it, guys. This 
freaking thing just delivers for me i have talked about it again and again and again and this fit or this bait just does not let me down when i can't catch fish i toss this on and the fish just seem to home in on it oh gosh there's just something about it man let's try to get back in this corner see if there's any more fish hanging out caught something on our next cast looks like it was a the logness monster try to get back in there so i don't know if that was the same fish that was i saw it like pushing up in the shallow like breaking on the bait i don't know if that big old five pounder could have got up that shallow this is like really really shallow but there's tons and tons of little bluegill and bait fish that are kind of hiding in these rocks that kind of you know spread out as this riprap and stuff comes out this way there's a bunch of that stuff out here in the water that y'all can't see so all these little bait fish are hanging around that i'm sure that big mama was just waiting out here in this section next to it just waiting for a fish to slip up and swim out of cover and take an opportunity to eat one of those guys unfortunately she ran into the two tap this morning but heck yeah guys that is awesome that is freaking awesome no more luck up in this corner I'm gonna work my way across to the other side of the pond, try throwing this around over there some more, see if I can get one or two more bites on this thing, and then I might switch over to that rage bug or the big old 10 inch anaconda worm that I have on and chuck that around back in that same corner. I think there definitely could be some more fish kind of sitting and staged in that similar area to where I caught that five pounder right there. So definitely want to give that a fair chance with some other stuff but while we got the two tap out and while we're catching fish with it we might as well give it a few more toss cover this whole pond at least was that a fit oh i had one oh <laughs> something bit it the second it went into that little corner right there no luck right here keep on moving around the pond there's one small fish but nevertheless a fish i think the smallest one of the day so far surfer on in not giving me any fight at all yeah definitely the smallest one but fish number three our second fish could have probably ate this fish and the first fish but you know they all count for something just a little dinker shoo There's one back-to-back -back cast. Back-to-back -back cast. Dinks on dinks, baby. <laughs> They're getting smaller. Oh boy. This is what I warned y'all about. That there is a bunch of little dinkers. A bunch of them. Come here, bud. And unlike most dinky fish that I catch that are like really floppy and aggressive and just, you know, they do not want to come on in. These little guys just give up. The second you hook them, it feels like a leaf, to be honest. <laughs> it feels like a big leaf, and they're just kind of laying there. Later, bud. <laughs> well, no more luck with the two tap in the small pond over here. I might pick it back up once we go over to the other pond, but I just want to walk back over here to my stuff and switch gears for a minute. And I have these big worms tied on that I've been wanting to try big old anaconda this is a 10 inch worm let me just get her untangled and i'll show y'all what she is about here we go that's the worm i was talking about big old purple worm right there big fish love big worms so i want to give this thing a shot today i think i'm going to start out trying this corner so let's give it a shot 
Probably should have checked my drag and all that stuff first. Someone's picking it up. Oh gosh, missed it. Took half my dang worm there, smaller bass. Shoot, I hope I brought some more of these. I think there's some in my bag. Let's see. Well, I didn't see any more of the big worms in here. I think I left them in the car or in my office or something when I was rigging up, but that's okay. We're gonna switch gears over to a Magnum Game Hog, which is just another big style creature bait. I think this might actually get bit a little bit easier in here, especially for some of these smaller fish that might try to pick this thing up. As you can tell, I lost half this big worm right here. That is a very typical thing to happen when you're fishing with these with when the smaller fish bites it they'll just kind of get the back half of it i try to let that fish eat it for a second i could kind of tell smaller was munching on it and i set the hook and he did not have the hook in his mouth and he just ripped off half of the back end so that is you know something that will happen when you're using longer worms like that so it's something you definitely should know but we're going to switch over to this right here and i think this might get bit a little bit easier all right all right re-rigged with the game hog let's see what this thing can do got a little nibble up in here earlier i want to see if i can just slow it down with the game hog and get a bite no more luck in here i want to go ahead and move up to that next pond so let me just gather my things and we will head that way made it to the far end of the big pond, I want to start down here. I don't really ever have much luck down at the other end, so I figured I would just zoom straight over here and start casting around. Let's see if I can pick one off of this little dam right here. There we go. Fish has it, fish has it. There we go, we got him. Right off the dam and it's a little Twinkie. Come on in here, Junior. Got him off the dam though. Figured I'd have a good chance of getting at least one there. I'm surprised he was able to get that thing all the way in his mouth. I got a six odd hook in there. Got a, a six inch fish. <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. Nice little guy though. Oh, sorry bud. Did not mean to release you like that. I was trying to grab you a little bit more carefully so I could just let you slither right on out of my hand into the water and you decided to do a, a flop. So I'm gonna put that one on you. All right, all right. Glad to see you first cast in here. Caught a fish off this dam in. Could there be some more? Hopefully some bigger ones. Well, no more luck with the game hog in here. Threw this thing around for a while. No more luck besides that little dinker. I think I'm gonna walk back over here and go back to the two tap and see if I can get some more fish riled up with that. All right, two tap, I choose you. Let's see, let's see what you can do. Oh God, what the heck was that? What in the world? I'm confused what just happened. I don't know if the bale just like closed awkwardly. That was bizarre. There's one up in the corner. Hit it almost instantly. Let's go. Another Dinkasaurus. Come on in. Ah, this one was a little bit more lively, but yet again like i said there's just a lot of small ones in here do not get ferocious on me 
I think the last fish I caught was talking about, you know, how they don't freak out or anything. They're just chill. And the last two I've caught have been wiggling like crazy. Gosh, dang. All right, bud. Later. There's one. Oh, Dinkasaurus is for days. That one came off. I think we've caught six fish right now, maybe seven, six or seven. And I think all, uh, all of them combined outside of the big one, way less than the big one. <laughs> That's pretty funny.